Let's take a look at an actual money application question, which is always great fun because it turns out money is where it's at. And we're going to see that if we carefully read through the issues, we can parse the words into mathematics, and then we can use the power of algebra to actually solve whatever the issue is that we have to face. Let's check out this question that Oprah has run into. So Oprah invests part, part of her, Oprah invests part of her $6,000 bonus into a 5% simple interest account. So she's going to get 5% of her money at the end of each year. Uh, she invests the remainder, whatever's left over, into an 8.5 simple interest account. Now, after just one year, the two accounts earn her a total of $370 in interest. How much did she invest in each account? Now, this sounds a little bit tricky because we don't know how much she invested in each account. In fact, we don't even know how much interest she got in each account. We only know the total amount of interest that she received over the year from both accounts. So she put some clump of money in, and we don't know how much, into the 5% account, and that generated 5% interest on whatever she put in. And the rest of the $6,000 she put in an 8.5% account, and then she got some interest. Now, Oprah's a little silly, isn't she? Because, of course, if we were Oprah, we would have put all the money in the 8.5% account and get a lot of interest. But you know Oprah. She's crazy, crazy, crazy. So let's see if we can figure out exactly Oprah's investment strategy. The first thing here we have to do is understand the question. So what do we know? We know that she started with $6,000. That was a big bonus. So she must have done some serious good work. $6,000. And then she took that amount and she split it into two pieces, but we don't know how much is in either piece. One piece went into the 5% account and one piece went into the 8.5% account. So since we don't know how much went into both, we should give that unknown a name. Let's call it F. So let's let F equal the amount that she put in the 5% account. Now, we could have a, a different uh, unknown to represent the amount that we put in the 8.5%. But if you think about it, we actually have a connection between this amount and the total amount. Because we know that whatever was left over went into the other account. If she starts with $6,000 and she uses F to put into the 5%, then how much does she have left over to put in the 8.5%? We automatically know it's 6,000 minus F. So in fact, we know that 6,000 minus F goes into the other account. Do you see that? So that makes a little bit of sense. OK, now, what do we know? We know the total amount of interest she received at the end of one year, and it turns out it was exactly $370. So what we could do to answer this question is figure out what the interest was earned from this account, F dollars invested for one year at 5%, and then the interest earned on this account, 6,000 minus F dollars invested at a rate of 8.5%. Take those two interests and then combine them and add them together, and we know that has to equal exactly $370. Let's write down that equation because that's the key to unlinking this question. So let's see what happens. What we see is we know that 5% of F, 5% of F, of is our Q, that of means we have to multiply. We have to find 5% of the amount she invested. So that's 5% of F plus 8.5% of the rest, 6,000 minus F. And that we know equals $370. Now, if you look at that for a second, that actually is an equation that just involves F. So we can now actually solve this for F. This is the connection between the interest that we know at the end and the F and the 6,000 minus F that we knew at the beginning. 
So we put this together into one equation, we see this. Now we want to solve, of course we have to change those percentages to decimals. So if we do that right now and change this to a decimal issue, what we'd see is 0.05F plus 0.085 times 6,000 minus F equals $370. Now there are lots and lots of decimal points here and I think I'd like to clear them all away. So let me actually sweep through and multiply this entire equation by a thousand. If I multiply this by a thousand, that moves the decimal point three units to the right, one, two, three, and that will clear away all this uh, decimal stuff here. I'll be left with the whole number. And then one, two, three, I'll be have a 50 F here. And then one, two, three, I'll have a huge sum here. So let's multiply through by a thousand. When I do that, I'm going to see the following. I'm going to see 50 F plus 85 times 6,000 minus F equals, and are you ready for this, 370,000. And now you'll notice there's no decimal points, it's just whole numbers, so we can actually solve this. The way that I would solve this would be to first distribute the 85 across these two terms. And if you do that, here's what you get. You get 50F plus 510,000, it's a big number, these are really big numbers, minus and then 85F, and that equals 370,000. All right, well now we can actually solve. If we combine all this, what do we see? Well, a 50F a minus 85F is negative 35F. So we have a negative 35F, and that equals, if I subtract 510,000 from both sides, it disappears here, and then I have a, a 370,000 minus 510,000, and so I see a min minus, uh, I mean, negative 140,000. And now all I have to do is just divide both sides by negative 35. And I see F equals negative 140,000 divided by negative 35. And what does that equal? It equals 4,000. Well, that's F. Now, what in the world was F? I already forgot. Well, you have to go back to the very beginning. And remember that F represented the amount uh, invested in 5%, the 5% account. So 4,000 was invested in the 5% account. So what was invested in the, so $4,000 went into the 5% account. And then what was left of the 6,000? Well, $2,000 that went into the 8.5% account. And that was the breakdown of her investment. And you can see how we took these two pieces of information and put it together with the percentages to compute the total interest for the year, and that equals the total interest that we were given. Then we were able to solve specifically for F, and that allowed us to find F, and then by taking 6,000 minus F, we were able to find for the other account. So yet again, we see how algebra allows us to actually understand even financial things. And now we can look at this and say, and scratch our head and wonder, why didn't Oprah just put all the money in the 8.5% account? The answer, because then we wouldn't have had a fun algebra question to consider. So she sacrificed a little bit of interest for our own education. And we should all say to Oprah, thank you. I'll see you soon.